we are on the brink of a scientific revolution, the greatest in the history of humankind. We have discovered the nature of time, and this changes everything. Einstein's relativity shows us exactly what time is, but how it actually works has remained an impenetrable mystery. Relativity shows us that time is a linear dimension. It is basically exactly the same kind of thing as each of the three dimensions of space, except there is only one of it and is invisible. Einstein's genius shows us without question that the universe is four-dimensional, having three dimensions of space and one of time. But it's all static. That is the big problem. Nothing happens in the four-dimensional universe of relativity because everything is there already. The whole four-dimensional block of space-time simply exists. As Professor David Deutsch states, space-time is sometimes referred to as the block universe because within it the whole of physical reality, past, present and future, is laid out once and for all, frozen in a single four-dimensional block. This is a great mystery, since we are experiencing time passing and things happening all the time. Helen Weil, a close associate of Einstein's, explained it over 50 years ago, but the truth of his simple solution was not realized. The world simply is, it does not happen. Only to the gaze of my consciousness, crawling up the lifeline of my body, does the world fleetingly come to life. Thus, although the physical universe is static, there is the experience of the passage of time and things changing. As Sir Roger Penrose states, in the static four-dimensional space-time universe of relativity, particles do not even move, being represented by static curves drawn in space-time. As Dr. John Smithers continues, thus what we perceive as moving 3D objects are really successive cross-sections of immobile 4D objects past which our field of observation is sweeping. This field of observation is the field of observation of consciousness. And this is exactly what Weil is saying. Time passes and the world comes to life only as consciousness sweeps through space-time up the lifeline of the body. Such a simple solution. But there is one problem. How can consciousness be so special? So special that this and this alone brings the world to life? It is the answer to this question which has recently been discovered, and this resolves the great mystery of the passage of time. As Professor David Chalmers has revealed, consciousness is not just some property of a brain, it is a fundamental property of the universe as a whole. As he explains, the experience in consciousness is a fundamental feature of the world alongside mass, charge and space-time. It is not part of reality, it is contextual to reality, all reality. Very strange, but very simple. This is the kind of resolution forecast by the great physicist John Wheeler. Behind it all, surely, is an idea so simple, so beautiful, that when we grasp it, in a decade, a century, or a millennium, we will all say to each other, how could it have been otherwise? How could we have been so stupid? The idea we have finally discovered is of exactly this nature. So beautifully simple that it resolves the great paradox of relativity in the most straightforward way imaginable. The passage of time in a static physical universe is simply the effect of consciousness in action. The consciousness of the universe sweeping the field of observation through space-time. The implications are immense because it means one is immortal.
this consciousness always continues to experience. So when the physical body dies, experiencing goes straight on, elsewhere in the multiverse of all possible worlds, as explained by Professor Hans Moravec. We lose our ties to physical reality, but in the space of all possible worlds, that cannot be the end. Our consciousness continues to exist in some of those, and we will always find ourselves in worlds where we exist and never in ones where we don't. In other words, the body dies, but the experiential reality goes straight on into the next episode of life. This is a kind of reincarnation, but not in the traditional sense of being born again as a baby. You are the same person, but with one new and very strange experience. That of waking up again, having died. Moravec is saying that when you die, every possible version of reality in which there is a logical continuation of your experiential reality exists already, somewhere in the multiverse. Given the kind of consciousness described by Chalmers, it is one of these that is inevitably experienced when you die in this lifetime. This kind of consciousness simply jumps to a continuation of your experiential reality, and life continues. It does not matter how improbable such versions of reality might be. If that is all there is to experience, that is what gets experienced. This is the essence of the well-known concept of quantum immortality, as explained by Professor Max Tegmark. A humorous example is found in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, when Arthur Dent and Ford Prefect are thrown out of a spaceship into the vacuum. With crazy levels of improbability, instead of experiencing their last moments, reality, they find themselves inside another spaceship, which has just this second materialized at that exact point in space-time. In reality, however, it is likely that the continuation of life will be very much more ordinary. As Moravec explains, it will always be the simplest and most probable version of reality possible that explains your continued existence. Understanding the nature of consciousness changes everything. There is more to life than this brief span of decades. We don't remember previous lives because we are newbies, first-timers, born as babies. But now we exist, we go on and on. At the end of one lifetime, one automatically begins another because consciousness always continues to experience. As a purely physical entity, death is the end, and one is inescapably returned to nothing. But in the experiential reality, exactly the opposite is the case. Life is an endless exploration of lifetime after lifetime, and death is the greatest adventure into the unknown.